Hey, it's Chris Gio of TruthFrequencyRadio.com. Tonight, we're going to be talking about Flat Earth, the holographic reality, the Atlanteans, and the Hattie Bove documents. Don't go anywhere. everyone, it's Chris and Cherie Geo, TruthFrequencyRadio.com. It's December 17th, 2015. We wanted to do another video for you. We've received so many great comments and people are really resonating with the stuff we're doing here on YouTube. Of course, we are in our seventh year of broadcasting now on the radio, um, but these video talks I feel um, are a lot more personal and you're here in our living room with us. So we're really glad that everybody's enjoying them. Now, where we left off was Flat Earth and the nature of reality, which is what I wanna get into today. Um, the evolution of consciousness is a very interesting subject, which has taken me personally anyways, from the very beginning to being a complete brainwashed zombie to questioning the very foundation of my reality and the construct which we live in, which of course is the flat earth material. So let's start at the very beginning. The very beginning is the political paradigm. Most of us wake up and realize the left-right paradigm is one and the same, it's just a box. Uh, all the presidents are related to one another. It doesn't matter whether you vote Republican or Democrat. It's all going to wind up in the same outcome as we've seen with the Democrats and Republicans throughout the past 20, 30 years, if not longer than that. So you break out of that box and then you start to realize that the government is capable of committing false flags, such as on 9-11, Sandy Hook, and the rest of uh, the big news stories that we hear about, but in actuality, they're just uh, ways for them to push their agenda forward. And then you break out of that and you get more into the kind of David Icke type information where you uh, start to realize that there's a dark energetic force working behind the scenes and um, manipulating reality from outside of reality. Uh, David Icke would say it's reptilians. Christians would say it's demons. The Native Americans would say it's the Anaye. Every single culture has a story of these reptilian entities, whether they're interdimensional, extraterrestrial, or physical. So you break out of that. And then once you take another step, you start to actually question the very foundation of reality and the construct that you live in, which brings us right to the flat earth information. I've been doing a lot of soul searching and a lot of philosophizing on the flat earth topic over the last couple of weeks. And I've realized that whether the earth is a sphere or flat is really irrelevant to what's really going on here. What's really going on is that we're getting to a point in the evolution of our own consciousness where we're able to question the entire reality and the entire construct and question even what we believed was etched in stone and completely 100% solid and that of course is science. So if all the other institutions and all the other programs are gonna lie to us, why would science not lie to us? A lot of people have a hard time making that leap and, and questioning that part of reality. But really, I think those of us that have done so and those of you out there that have done so, I applaud you because that means that you've really moved up to that next level, in my opinion. So, um, however, there's still some people that are still stuck in that older paradigm and they just can't quite grasp the idea of questioning the very construct that we live in or questioning science or pseudoscience or any of their books that they've written. Well, and it doesn't mean they're not going to be ready for it later on down the line. I mean, it's kind of like explaining algebra to a second grader. A second grader or a first grader isn't going to understand that you can sometimes mix letters and numbers together to solve mathematical equations. But you wait a little bit longer, and then when they get to fifth grade, sixth grade, then you can kind of spring it on them that, hey, you can do much bigger mathematical calculations if you mix letters with numbers. But before that time, they would tell you, oh, you're crazy. That's insane. Why would you mix letters and numbers? 
that's stupid. And that, that's a that's a really good analogy. I mean, think about this. If you saw an algebra equation before you understood how you can use letters to solve mathematical problems, you would think it's stupid and you would think it's crazy too. So all of these comments on YouTube, you're an idiot, you're a moron, you're this, you're that, it's the exact same thing. Those people just haven't come to that level of understanding it. And you know, I see people asking really pedestrian questions when it comes to the flat earth stuff. And it, it's an indication to me that they haven't taken uh, the time to research the subject. And instead they're just criticizing uh, without even knowing what the subject is about because they're asking very fundamental questions that are answered as soon as you start to look into this information. So if you really want to debunk this kind of information, then just go out there and look at the information that's being presented first and foremost so you're not coming into the comment section with these arguments uh, that are really pedestrian and, and just make you look silly. But to everybody else out there, I would say don't even engage these questions because these people really aren't seeking answers because wisdom is not handed to you on a silver platter and wisdom is not found within the YouTube comments itself. Wisdom is valuable. Wil wisdom takes time and focus and research to get to. So these people really aren't seeking wisdom. So don't even waste your time. Don't engage with them. So back to the point of this video, which is, of course, the next level of understanding. Um, as I've started to really research and really go within myself, I realized that the question is more important than the answer. Um, is it flat? Is it a globe? Does it really matter? No, it does not. Um, there is something much bigger going on here. A couple of months ago, I journeyed into the ayahuasca realm and I asked the question, as I have over, several times over the past year or so in the ayahuasca realm, what is this construct? Is it round? Is it flat? Is it a prison? Is it an artificial simulation? Is it a school? What exactly is this construct? And over the course of time, it's, giving me, it's given me a lot of information. For instance, there was one particular instance when I encountered these three reptilian insect-like beings and they were they had this little device and within this device was a bunch of light and I asked them, what are you and what are you doing here? And they said, well, we are the keepers of the universe, we're the watchers. We And I asked them, did you create this? And they said, no, we didn't create it, but we maintain it because this is where souls exist and the souls could not exist without this particular construct. So when I have these ayahuasca visions, I have to ask myself whether they're metaphoric or whether they're being told to me because it's something that I need to, to hear or if it's an actual vision of another realm. So up until this point, I really didn't understand what to do with this particular vision. And I'll get to the point here in just a moment. So I had another vision last July during another ceremony. And I asked again, what is this world? And it showed me a pyramid in, uh, that was over this world, not a dome, but a pyramid. And in, with this pyramid, there was an eye that was looking down upon this pyramid. And it told me that we're all hooked up to this particular matrix and we've come here to learn uh, like a university where in the, the universe is a university and we have these experiences and if we're on the right path then we send back to our higher selves positive signals um, saying that we're on track and that we're progressing through this video game in a positive way in the way that uh, we are progressing in order to achieve the next level but if we're living selfless, selfishly and living in a lower frequency, when we're sending negative um, commands back to our higher self, and thus the matrix around us will start to karma, will start to um, bend in a karmic way to push us back on track. And again, I wasn't sure whether to take this as a metaphor or whether to take this as this is the way things really work in the other dimensions. However, I came across some documents, and this was just a couple of 
week, about a week ago that I came across this document called the Hattie Bove Research, H-A-T-I-B-O-V. Now, Crow777 was on our show about a month ago, a month and a half ago, and he mentioned these documents, but I hadn't read them up until this point. Because, um, you know, when, when people mention things on our show, I've got my hand on the mixer, I'm watching three different monitors, I'm doing all kinds of things, and I things like this kind of just, sometimes I miss them, and I don't hear them until I go back and listen to the archive again. Um, but he alluded to the Hottie Bove documentation. Well, when I opened it up and started to research it, oh my God, it was almost as if it was exactly what was being given to me in the ayahuasca realm over the last year. So first of all, in this document, you they talk about the Atlantean race, which is funny because that goes right back to Eric Dubay's work, the Atlantean conspiracy. The Atlanteans are a race of insect-like spider gray aliens, just like the ones that I saw about a year ago in the ayahuasca realm. And they actually have put us within this construct. And this construct is more of a prison than anything else, according to these documents, according to this Russian researcher. Now, this prison was created because there is an intergalactic war, kind of a matrix terminator type thing going on between different species. And uh, we were dissidents or we were part of the enemy team or you know, we were some kind of irritant to the opposing side and so to the Atlanteans. And so they took us and they put us within this construct. And this construct, according to these documents, is actually a pyramid. Now, the lunar wave, which is something that Crow has been documenting, also comes up in these documents. And apparently what happens, again, according to these documents, is anytime they want to make a program change, let's say you need more babies in one part of the world, or you want to create a drought in one part of the world, or you need rain in another part of the world, or an earthquake, or natural disaster, or something, they send these programs through the lunar wave, through the moon, and also through the sun. See, these two objects are not actually way off in space, but rather they're right here within this pyramid, within this dome, and they're sending the program changes. So it's kind of like in They Live, how the satellite was picking up all of the reality and imposing the fake reality over everybody. That's the same way that the moon, our satellite, mm -hmm. is projecting the reality upon us. So that brought me to the idea of the Schumann resonance. And the Schumann resonance is the, the frequency of Earth. It's the constant wave that they've been investigating. The heartbeat. Uh, the heartbeat of the Earth, yes. Mm -hmm. But could the Schumann resonance actually be something more? Could it be the computer program system actually sending the waveforms out? Is that the frequency uh, in the same way that a radio station is broadcasting? Is that what we're picking up on? So it talks in these, uh, in these documents about different times when there were these reset events. And NASA, as a matter of fact, has said that we've had 32 different advanced civilizations. Now, you believe NASA as much as you want to believe them, but 32 advanced civilizations that have been destroyed. There's been 32 reset events so far. We're number 33. Mm -hmm. There's that number 33 now all of a sudden. Yep. Yep. The illuminated number. It's amazing how that, how that that kind of came out at the exact same time. Uh, the story by NASA saying that they that we ha we're on our, our way to the thirty third collapse. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, do they just want us to think that there's going to be a collapse, or is this for real? But then I read, yeah, it's for real in other documents. So I'm I think that that's spot on, and that we're headed for another reset. Right, and that brings to mind all of these stories: The Matrix, Dark City, all these other movies. Is it predictive programming or is it the sleeping self trying to say, hey, wake up, this is what's really going on, this is what's really going on? Because according to these documents, 
once the soul is captured in this intergalactic war it's injected into an organic container which is the body and its memory is wiped before being injected into the container and i thought to myself if this container is really a prison well then why would this container die would this container go on forever isn't that the most efficient way to keep somebody trapped is to create a steel prison around them rather than an organic prison but then i thought to myself you know what maybe if the spirit stays within the container for so long then it starts to wake itself up and it starts to remember and as many of us do when we start to enter especially around the age of 30 and beyond we start to remember our past lives so we start to remember a lot of things that we've forgotten so the longer that we stay in this container the more likely it is for us to actually remember what's going on and i think that's why in the bible as well you read about people living to be 900 and 500 and that really pissed off god that really pissed off the energy that was controlling us and he cut our lifespan down because we can't achieve that consciousness, that Christ consciousness, in order to escape this matrix, this artificial construct that we've been injected in. So there have been other researchers who've talked about on the moon devices that actually grab souls and that there's gray aliens up there or whatever species of aliens uh, that are actually grabbing souls when you die. So you die and you're told that there's going to be a Jesus figure or a light or something like that. Yeah. yeah, that is greeting you or dead relatives. And you start to go to this light, you go to these dead relatives and you're sucked up into this soul sucking machine, throw back into the vortex and then recycled again, right back into another, into another body, into another organic container, organic prison. So, the point is, just as the Egyptians were trying to do with the Book of the Dead, is navigate through the afterlife to get out of this prison. And that's the only way to get out. And we have to do this in this finite amount of time that we have, because we don't have 900 years, we don't have 9,000 years, we only have 80 years, and that's going down to 60 or 70 now with all the, the garbage all around us until we're reset again. Or if enough of us wake up, maybe there's an entire reset on the entire world. Maybe it's flooded again. Which brings me to the idea of the Jesus, the Buddhas, and, and all of these quote-unquote ascended masters. See, if Jesus existed, then maybe his role was to come down here and to show us how we can achieve Christ consciousness in a matter of 33 years as opposed to having to, to go through 900 years worth of training to show us how to get out of here. And it's only through elevating the consciousness by breaking down every one of these programs and every one of these systems and starting to question the entire construct. Because as long as you believe the construct is real, the construct still has you in one way or another. Right, you have to claim your freedom and claim yourself to be a free person. And that's, I mean, that's why they call it the Freemasons compared to the not Freemasons. I mean, we're the, we're the not Freemasons and they're the Freemasons. They have, they have the ability to, to think for themselves and they know what the construct really is. And, but the ones that aren't free, the ones that are slaves, they have no idea at the bottom. That's what it's all about. And so everybody looking for the answers, we commend you and we're right there with you. And we're so glad that we are at this point where the entire consciousness is shifting. Now, there is one more thing about these documents that is worth mentioning. They mentioned three different genomes. The 42s, the 47s, and the 48s, I don't remember. I've got to go back and look at the documents again. But it talks about the 42s being the lower level of consciousness and not able to ascend at all. And being so dumbed down to the point to where they're just using resources within the matrix, within the prison, and they're, they need to be eliminated, according to these documents. And they put a date on this elimination, which is between 2012 and 2015. And this was the 80% population reduction that we've been hearing about for decades now. Of course, that plan never was put into action. But what this document goes on to say is that some of these 42s have actually been removed. The souls have been removed from the organic container. But the organic container is just walking around empty 
but it's still playing out the program until it just fades away. Similar to a zombie. Yes, exactly. Wow. So that would explain why so many people are walking around right now with a complete and total lack of empathy. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous how disconnected people are from what other people are experiencing in this world and they allow all of these horrible things to take place it's it's really sad the way we treat the refugees coming over the way we treat the mexicans coming over just because they're a different race a different color they come from a different part of the world and we've lost all of our empathy as a species well the majority have right but others are starting to ascend. So they were very interesting documents and I hope in the very near future we're able to put a video together to where we can really go over everything point by point. But this was the preliminary research into it and it's really answered a lot of questions for me. I mean, I feel like um, we've really unlocked some doors here. Now, does this document contain the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Probably not. The truth is always going to be scattered into many different puzzle pieces, and it's up to us to put those puzzle pieces together and see the big picture. And that's exactly what we're doing at truthfrequencyradio.com. So kiss the one you love right now because you never know the last time is going to be. And remember, Truth Frequency Radio, your protection from deception. Mm -hmm.